If you would, uh, please turn to John chapter 8. I'm just going to read one verse to start. <coughs> John chapter 8 and verse 45. Now these are the words of Christ speaking. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. I realize those are not the most cheerful words in the world. Especially when spoken by Jesus Christ. Because you know two things automatically. A, it's a fact, and B, it's true as true can be if Christ said it. So whoever he's talking to, whoever he's talking about, they don't believe him. But what struck me here, um, is just the simple fact that he said, because I told you the truth. Because I told you the truth. I tell you the truth. He's doing it even as he spoke. I tell you the truth. Ye believe me not. Something happens because of the truth being spoken. Something happens whenever the truth is spoken. Every time. And I mean every single time. And I also mean whether it's from a pulpit or it's in a house. Whether you're preaching or whether you're talking with a friend. Whether you're talking with your relatives. In a group or individually. Anytime the truth is spoken, there's a result. There is a result. Something happens. In this case, using these words here of our Lord Jesus Christ, it's not something good. Matter of fact, it's very, very bad. But I do want to point out the truth is not the cause of unbelief. Are you ready? The truth spoken or even written somehow some way some fashion relayed to a man or a woman the truth manifests unbelief in those people it manifests the unbelief it manifests the faithlessness that is already in man it doesn't make it However, it does make it known. It shows it. Now, how can the truth be the cause of this showing of faithlessness, of unbelief? It's the way we are. Jesus said it in John 5 and verse 43. He said, I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you'll receive. We're perverted. I mean, that's what we mean by depravity. Okay? You know, you're not as bad as you can be, but you are perverted as you can, just about as you can be. Because we will take the word of a man over the word of God naturally. Every time. You don't receive me, but you would receive one who comes in his own name. Because naturally, you will receive one who does not come in the name of the Father. That's the way we are. By nature, that's the way we are. And speaking the truth reveals that nature speaking the truth will always reveal that nature man not only hates the light 
man hates him who is the light. And he loves darkness rather than light in the place of, instead of the light. And we will receive one that comes in his own name before we'll receive the one that comes in the name of the Father. That's the way we are. Now as far as the cause of unbelief, actually in John chapter 8, Jesus had already covered this. You look at verse 37. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me. There's that word, because. This is why you seek to kill me. This is why you don't believe. Because my word hath no place in you. The problem is with us. The problem here, as Christ was speaking to these people, the problem was with them. I'll, I've said it before, I'll say it again. I may say it every Sunday. There's nothing wrong with the gospel. There's nothing wrong with the truth. There's nothing wrong with the message. But Christ told these men, my word has no place in you. And they manifested that. Why? How? They believed him not. I tell you the truth. Because I tell you the truth, ye believe it not. They may have never heard the truth before. That's possible sometimes. But now they've heard it, and guess what? They believe it not. The problem was in them, and the truth revealed it in them. There's no place in you for my word. Just as the light makes known the darkness around it, the truth of Jesus Christ manifest, shows, makes known the faithlessness of of men. What did Paul write? All men have not faith. Therefore you're persecuted. Therefore they're against you. Therefore what? They believe him not. They will not receive him. All men have not faith, and he also, Paul also wrote, the natural man cannot understand the things of the Spirit of God. Here's why. Christ's word has no place in them, in the natural man. There is no place for the word of our Lord Jesus Christ. Something has got to change. These men were faithless. Literally, what is translated here, literally it says, they not have faith in me, Christ said. They not had faith in me. Again, in John 5, I'm going to look back here just for a minute, the same sort of thing. <laughs> Before that, the verse before, I am coming in my Father's name. It's John 5 and verse 42. Is that right? Yes, it is. But I know you, Christ still speaking, that ye have not the love of God in you. He told these fellows in John 8, my word has no place in you. He told these people in John 5, but I know you, you have not the love of God in you. The problem's with us. The problem is with man as he is naturally. 
Then he says, I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. Verse 44, how can you believe? How can you believe? Which receive honor one of another, and seek not the honor that cometh from God only. How can you? Ye can't. Naturally, you cannot. The natural man cannot understand the things of the Spirit of God. Why? Because his word has no place in you, and you have not the love of God in you. Not naturally. Do you think that I do not think that I will accuse you to the Father? There is one that accuses you, even Moses, in whom you trust. For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me. For he wrote of me. But if ye believe not his writings, how shall ye believe my words? Well, you won't if the love of God is not in you. You won't if his word has no place in you. You will not. Back to John 8. Because I tell you the truth, what? Ye believe me not. This is extremely particular. Jesus Christ always was extremely particular. He says, ye believe me not. This is the act of faithlessness. They believe not. You ever think about this? The wind and the waves obey him. But man doesn't. How perverse is that? The wind and the sea obey him. He spoke the world into being. But ye believe him not. People have this idea, and they'll actually say it, that sometimes we overemphasize the depravity in man. I don't know that you can. I'm not saying you're as bad as you can be, but I am saying you're about, you know, at one time we were all dead in our trespasses and in sins. We were all dead to God. This is what we have here. At one time, every single one of us, Christ's word had no place in us. So rejoice if it does now. Rejoice if you believe him now. Because these men here, I mean, when Christ said this, Christ meant every single word of it. Ye believe me not. Yea, ye, these particular men had not the love of God in them. And these particular men had no place in them for God's word. Not Christ's words. They have been told by the Son of God manifest in the flesh that they love darkness rather than the light. They've been told the truth. And they manifested that they hated the truth and the one who delivered the truth to them. They've been told, I and my Father are one by the one who was the I. And his word had no place in him, in them because they were uncircumcised in heart and ears, just like those ones that Stephen was talking about. And because of that, they were always resisting the Holy Ghost. Now, from this, we could just surmise a result, as John did in his epistle. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us, and he that is not of God heareth not us. I quoted that last week. Hereby we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. But we don't have to surmise it. We don't have to deduce it. Because we just read down a little bit further in John chapter 8 
After verse 45, verse 46, which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? Well, he's going to answer that question in verse 47. He that is of God heareth God's words. Amen. Ye therefore hear them not. What? Here's that word again. Because ye are not of God. Now, if there's ever some words you don't ever want to hear, that's them. But that's exactly what Christ told these men. You don't hear because you're not of God. What do you tell them other fellas? You don't believe me what? because you're not my sheep. You don't believe because you're not my sheep. It's not you're not my sheep because you don't believe. That's the way the world wants to put it. That's what this is. He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore, therefore, hear them not because ye are not of God. That's what it says, folks. I'm not making this up. And I'm not going to sugarcoat it. These men were faithless. These men were lifeless. These men were lightless. His word had no place in them. They did not have the love of God in them. And it says, Christ said it plainly, because ye are not of God. That's what it says. This is one of the primary results of preaching the truth. There are always some that will not believe it. The lack is in man, not in Christ. The lack is in man, not in the spirit or the message or the gospel. Paul asked that question himself. Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Sadly, the answer sometimes is yes. But thankfully, thankfully also, it's not always yes. I understand this is what's called a tell. Your reaction to the truth, your reaction to the gospel, your reaction to those who speak the truth, when the truth is declared unto you, it will tell on you. It will. If some consider the believer, the messenger, their enemy, it is usually because of the truth. Now they can make all different kind of excuses, but this is where the difference lies. It's in the reaction to the truth spoken. Our Lord Jesus Christ spoke the truth and nothing but the truth. So help me God. I feel like I'm swearing in for court. I don't know that I could now. But they tried to kill him. Thousands left him because he spoke the truth to them. Literally thousands. But thankfully... If we back up just a little more to the beginning, more toward the middle of actually this, in verse 30 of John chapter 8, there are others who had heard what he had said before. And in verse 30, and, and she, as he spake these words, many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And some others respond and say, Oh, we're Abraham's seed. We've never been in bondage. They're lying already. When the truth is spoken... Some believe, and some believe not. That's it. 
Some believe and some believe not. He is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. Christ said it in John 14, a little further on. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If you come, if you receive the truth, if you rejoice in the words of Jesus Christ, if you come, it's because he brought you. If you have the love of God in you, it's because he gave it to you. It's not there naturally. There is no divine spark that needs to be fanned by any preacher anywhere. There's no faith in you already that you just need to work up. No, all men have not faith. If you have a place in you for his word, he put it there. He gave it to you. And he sent someone to you with his word. And you believe his word, his truth, his gospel. This is the two results of the truth being spoken to a man. And these are the only two results. You either believe or you believe not. There are four types of ground, but there's only two results. That parable of the sower. There's four types of ground, but there's only two results. Some believed and brought forth fruit, and the rest didn't. They may have believed for a while, but they brought forth no fruit. That's the lesson for the sower. You speak the truth. These are the results. Some believe and some believe not. These are the same results today as they were 2,000 years ago. God himself chose this way of revealing his son to his people. He is revealed. He is manifested. Whether any believe him or not. He is glorified whether you believe him or not. He has saved his people whether you believe him or not. But believe him. Believe him. Believe him. He said, if ye continue, then are ye my disciples indeed. Amen. If you're told the gospel again, do you still believe it? Do you still love it? If you're told the gospel, do you want to hear more? Men will either believe him or not. There is no middle ground. Now there are many different reactions in the rejections of men. This here, where Christ was speaking, this is the reaction of religious people. It is generally as violent as they can get away with. Because they perceive this as a spiritual threat. They don't perceive it as the truth. They perceive it as a threat to their way of believing. The humanists, the secular, the irreligious, as they like to think they are, our Lord, our faith, our belief to them is foolishness. That's the way it is. But it's still just a rejection of Christ and his truth. There's only two results. You either believe or you believe not. It doesn't matter how you don't believe. That doesn't matter. It's just the fact that you don't believe. But there's only one way to believe him. And that is for him to put a place in you for his word. That is for him to get, put the love of God in you. And guess what? He that is of God heareth God's words. That is a blessing from the Lord to every single one of his people. And it ought to give us some assurance. If you rejoice to hear his word, 
the truth preached, unvarnished and complete as we can, that should give you some assurance. If you love this, because trust me, I know there are thousands upon thousands, if not millions upon millions, who will not have this man to reign over them, and they don't even want to hear about this stuff. We, as I'm including myself in this, the ones who believe now, right now, we believe by his grace and his power and we continue in his word and his way also by his grace and his power. We're not perfect, we're just forgiven. That's a good statement. We stumble, we trip, we fall, but we are not utterly cast down. We, by his grace, through his faith, continue we believe now when the gospel is spoken to us that's important if you continue then are ye my disciples indeed his people do continue his people do believe every day and rejoice in the gospel in the truth I'll tell you the truth and you believe it. Our Heavenly Father, we're thankful again for this time and this place. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've given to us. Thank you for the table we shared this morning and the fellowship we have here. Be with Walter as he comes to speak. And we'll give you all the praise and the honor and the glory because it is yours. Thank you, Lord. Amen.